My name's Russ Cook and I'm attempting to become the first person ever to run the entire length of Africa. This is where I started, this is where I'm heading and this is where I am now. I've run 11,699 kilometres so far and I've got 4,901 left to go. So far on the mission. I've survived alone in the desert, a robbery at gunpoint, near death in the jungle, a brutal crash, horror infested waters, malnutrition, sickness and injuries and raised £146,000 for charity. In this episode, we dive into Senegal, cross into a bonus country, get a delivery what the f and begin to put the final problem in the mission. Come on, up and at him. So uh, we'll go and see what the Senegal's all about today, eh? Which t-shirt are you wearing today? Senegal football shirt on. Trying to get the people on side, you know what I mean? I'm not sure if that's actually the right way. Because we came from like that, eh? Senegal welcomed me onto its glorious tarmac as I pushed up north towards the desert. Today's route took me through the forest, skimming right along the edge of the Gambia, within 50 metres of the border and across the mighty Gambia River, which runs a thousand kilometres through three countries. It was a long, tough, sweaty day as the temperatures and my injuries steadily rose, but I finally made it and crashed into camp where a surprise awaited. Today we were crossing the River Gambia, so to celebrate this special occasion, I bought us not one chicken, I bought us two chickens. And oh, this really time, chicken. we don't even need to kill them ourselves. Wow. What is it, Jamie? Gambia chicken. Yeah, big day. Big day. <laughs> <laughs> I did know it was chicken, yeah, thank you. That looks good, man. Thanks happy happy nice Gambia song. day, boys. Happy Gambia day. Did, did you um, walk over? We walked over the border into the Gambia. Really? Yeah, where there was a bit, a bit of stretch of road that was like 300 meters away. You could always nip back tomorrow. Yeah, actually. It was only like... Close it off for my... Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It was only like five minutes walk from the road. Yeah. It looked quite a lot like Senegal, I can't lie. But, rest assured, we drew a line in the sand. So oh, yes, yeah, so you'll know where it is. When you enter, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was swimming in the Gambia, and then I needed to get out because the guy was screaming from the bridge. Get out! So that was how I was swimming. I was shame. like, why? Like, I had some nibbling fish on my feet, but no nibbling crocodiles yet, so I don't see the problem. Yeah, right, let's check in, boys. How's it going? Yeah, all right, you? Not too bad, not too bad. Had some nice chicken. Chicken? Yeah. Do you want some? Sounds kind of good, I can't lie. Mm, but can mix it into your queue. Unbelievable things. I just spoke to the queue lady today. Who's sending out more stuff than I'm. Oh, mac and cheese and oil and herb and she's sending um i think it's like a complete greens packet of like powder with all the green you know our green stuff's good so i won't lie guys i don't know the science but when it gets here i'll tell you all about yeah, it you'll know the science then. are we out of noodles are we out of noodles yes we're out of noodles all right make it work Did I just, did I just boil her? <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> did you ever watch that show, Dumb Ways to Die? We just got a live one here. That was a really dumb way to die, wasn't it, you idiot? <laughs> just flew into my heel cup. Now you're dead. Well, at least he died swimming around in the good stuff. Yeah. How many good, how many good dreams? I can't remember. If you could dream of being anywhere, where would you go? I'd go to the UK, although it's cold there at the moment. Wait, it's a dream, you can have anything you like, big puffer jacket. Yeah, go to the UK, see Emily. In Worthing? Yeah, why not? Why not? Where in Worthing would you go? Bar 10. Bar 10. I don't think it's called Bar 10 anymore, I think they've had a rebrand. Oof. I'd be quite happy with the Domino's, but I think she'd probably want to go somewhere a bit nicer. <laughs> Maybe. We're still on 50k days. Yeah. Have you got any plans to up it? I'll get up when it gets up. What's the main problem? Um, that I've been running marathons for 275 days. Right. Call me the sarcastic one. That's the problem, lad. <laughs> There's always problems. Oh, I've got solutions. More time, man. Safe, you ran the wrong way. 
livid about that, actually. <sighs> what a day. I set back off to chip away at the Senegalese tarmac network, still tired, body still in pieces. My hip flexors were basically spaghetti at this point. I needed to find strength somewhere. Luckily, I have a Gus. What you got there? Gustavo has been on a mission. Sorry, what? Gustavo has been on a mission. Gustavo has been on a mission. Mm -hmm. He has? He has acquired the good stuff. Holy s***. I think it's the best, best ice cream I've ever eaten. Jesus oh. Christ, man, who hurt you? What the fuck? <laughs> Gus, how does it feel to know that you can be the best logistician in the world, get impossible visas, and no one will ever be as happy as when you buy Pringles? Yeah, it's even painful because I'm like paying ridiculous amounts. Like I'm, I'm just feeling shit actually. Or like wasting money on junk food that's like, I'm not even gonna eat, it's bad for your body. I'm basically poisoning Toxins. people that I kind of care about. Oh, oh shit. That is the well, nut hang up. Hold up, hold up. All right, can we just circle back to the fact that Gus just said he kind of cared about it? I mean, we knew he cared about it. I'm just gonna say. I'm saying it now, best day of the mission. It's never gonna get better. You know what it is, Dan? It's a big day. Stan, have you seen this? Show in the photos, Gus. What? Uh, Are you two just as surprised as I was seeing that? I am I am shocked. I need to look at that not through a camera. Are they dreads? Wasn't that damn to have dreads? You've blowed up, mate. I'll put it that way. I'm shocked. <laughs> I'm actually shocked as well. I know you're confused you, and I, surprised. I am confused. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna leave. Felt like a new man, cholesterol surging through my veins like super serum. I blasted off onto the road. My muscles now enriched in saturated fats had explosive power, brain focused and sharp from an extreme sugar high. I was undefeatable. I need to go. Okay, love you. <laughs> Hi mate. Hello, how is it? Yeah, all right, you? All stable over here. Stable, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm excited to eat some of that French strand that you got from the supermarket earlier. Been onto the phone to Emily for hours. We got a book. I'd actually recommend this book. I think it's really good. I think it's called 101 Questions to Ask Before You Get Engaged. She's got it and she asks the questions and then we talk about things like in 10 years time, where do you want to be emotionally, spiritually, economically? What's a question you've always wanted to ask your partner but never have? I'd recommend if you think about getting engaged, girls and boys. Do you think this mission would be harder if you didn't have them to talk to you? Oh man, I think you would, I think I actually would have lost my mind. Sounds like Mr. Hardest Geezer is a big softy. I think the hardest geezer really would probably embrace emotions more than cut them away. Not that I always do, quite often ignore them. But it's harder to embrace them and deal with them than it is to just shut them away a lot of time. I agree. I think it's a big problem in society that it's more manly to, to shut them away, to don't have emotions. Yeah. Yo. Oh. For some reason my sugar high had worn off from yesterday and I was back to trudging down the roads as the forest opened up into the vast van. It had been weeks now since food poisoning and still my body was a state. I was beginning to realise that this might not ever go away. Wrapped in the evening standards. British paper? Yes. Yeah. Got a Gareth Southgate on it. It's decent. Food game's really gone out. Have you guys seen, I said, like the artisanship on metal? Yeah, man. It's through the roof. I think this is the, the best metal artisanship I've ever seen in Africa. If you look on the, the buses, like they have like these racks on top of the buses mostly. Mm. It's all so delicately fabricated. It's not like simple iron rods, now it's like it's art pieces consisting out of thousands of parts or like cut out plates and special shapes. It's really, uh, say, the best metal. I feel like the level a car gets to in Europe when we decide to give up on it and the level that a car gets to when the Africans decide to give up on it 
two yeah. very very different things oh mate it's it's night and day like even for me and you who buy sh cars and run them into the ground yeah. like my level of running to the ground is like Can't it. Go, it. Fuck it. yeah yeah yeah, yeah exactly it. exactly how are you feeling after this break delightful want to do another one with k <laughs> i need you do it with me so <laughs> How many more do you think you have in the tank today? We'll definitely do 15, maybe get a cheeky 16 in there today, who knows? Well, my hip flexors and my, don't even actually know what muscle is, but somewhere up here, it's still playing up quite a lot, especially later in the day. I would have uh, imagined that you like became stronger after nine months, but you just still be Yeah, yeah, <laughs> me too. Sort of um, goats and sheep. <laughs> Could say that, yeah. I always do wonder where they're going. Maybe to like a watering hole or something. Yeah, maybe. Proper pussy animals, aren't they? Like goats and sheep. Just do what they're told, don't they? I mean, we thought like that was the plan. I know they've been like, you know, that's been ingrained into their psyche for a long time. But also like, grow a backbone. <laughs> right, see you in a bit. See you in a bit. Swimming through a sea of goats and sheep, I got back out there, moving slowly but steadily towards another 50k. Yet again, I ran deep into the night, crashing to camp late. Yo. Hey mate. How's it going? All right, what about you? Sweet. What is ready? Oh, that looked like a lot of effort. <laughs> so your brother's coming out? Yeah, and he's coming on the 29th. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? That's a good thing. He's had a long time about being reminded who the boss is, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, only time I met Andy, I watched you arm wrestling in a bar to prove that you were the hardest geezer. And in fairness, you did win. Wasn't an easy win though. Nah, it was totally easy. I had no problem. Yeah, so it was a really yeah. easy win. Yeah, yeah. totally mm -hmm. finessed him, no problem. Andy, I love you, but I will kick your head in. <laughs> Josh is coming through, isn't it? I'm pretty sure. Josh and Maxi. Josh and Maxi. Yeah. And big influx of the Germans. The Austrians, they're basically Germans. Super. Cashew nuts are the best nuts, in my opinion. Cashews, then pistachios, then like almonds. Then peanuts, I reckon. <laughs> nuts. I had something else on my mind as I began to run today. The problem of getting permission to run through Algeria was fast approaching and so far all of our solutions have failed. The reality of the mission's future had never looked more cloudy, but I had a plan. Big day. Is it? It is, you've got the biggest announcement oh, yeah, of shit. the whole of Project Africa, which you can talk about. It'll be done by the time this video goes out. For those that have followed from the start, they'll know that Algeria didn't grant us a visa right at the start of the mission. And um, we still haven't got visas for Algeria. Basically, it's getting to the point now where we need a visa. If we don't get a visa, this kind of mission failed, really. In a last-ditch attempt, I'm going to put something out on social media asking the Algerian government to help us out. I guess it'll either work or it won't. If I'm not able to run for Algeria whatsoever, then... Free guys. I can't lie. What do you think is the biggest thing that a Westerner could learn from Africa? I think in the Western world, we live in a much more isolated way. A lot of people are very lonely and alone in the West, I would say. You don't get that same feeling across Africa. I think like communities and family and villages still play like a really big part in day-to-day -day life here. I think that's a really nice way to live. Even if you're a stranger in a village, it's so easy to, to have your social contacts because everybody is interested, everybody has time. It's the way of life, just, but outside of that, maybe even hospitality. Like in Europe, we're so closed off for people we don't know. Whereas here, they're like 100 times more helpful, more kind. I would personally say, like when we're having our breaks, like at least 10 times a day, someone asks, do you have a breakdown? People always want to help. That's really, really cool. Yeah, I forgot to. Nice. Senegal already felt really different to the rest of West Africa. Half the motorbikes were replaced by donkeys, horses and carts, and the bustling streets were lined with beautiful markets and ornately decorated buildings. 
Guinea was predominantly Muslim, but Senegal is almost entirely, and this was reflected in the beautiful clothes and traditions of its people. Still, it remained friendly, safe and welcoming, and a pleasure to run through. The camp this evening was in a quarry. Unfortunately, I've missed a memo and didn't quite take the right route. Which bit do you reckon I should try and scale? I think you should just jump off. Just get me gone. No, I reckon you'd make it. I think my knees are probably on about 5% strength. Any jump more than half a meter is we're in the danger zone, I think. Um, I think an over there looks a bit proper. Oh, me. <laughs> Nice. Got me f***ing Spider-Man. What is old Joshua out? I thought I was going to be seeing him tonight. Yeah, he reckons about midnight. I think he also took the owner of the car. He took the owner of the car. Cool. Is that another Austrian? Yeah. Three German speakers coming. It's five of us now. Five losers against two winners. Two World Wars. <laughs> One World Cup. The fact that most of them are Austrian as well, it doesn't really work, does it? <laughs> What's the uh, feedback on your announcement? I haven't put it up. I was, um... I did try and record it, but it was classic one of them where, because I've scripted it, it's quite a long script, couldn't really, it wasn't really flowing. Plus, that road was so noisy, there's just too much going on in the background. Mm. I'm just going to pick that up in the morning. It just needs to be clear, and I was like... Yeah, maybe while you were running wasn't a good idea for yeah, that. Well, I thought it was a good idea, and then I tried to do it, and I was like, oh, shit, this is a shit idea. Yeah. Oh, well, well, I guess you're going to have to wait till the next episode to find out if we're or not. <sighs>